Um, so look, I want to talk about this beautiful article that you wrote that has resonated with so many people out there. Couples, women, people going through a similar situation to yourself. And in this article, you talk about fertility and you say the first time round, you could do so in the context of you know having a child at the end of it. So your son is four. Yeah. Um, but this time you felt a real duty to talk about fertility without conceiving. Yes. And and you felt that that was really important. I know that there, were, there was obviously um, some thought behind whether you should write it or not, mm. and we can talk about that as well. But it's it's obviously a subject that needs, you know, this subject hasn't been talked about enough, and this resonated hugely with people. Was it a freeing sort of cathartic exercise for you in writing it and now I'm sure connecting with lots of other people going through similar yes I mean I I wrote this article the bones of it not long after I had a miscarriage in January and I just didn't know what to do with myself and I found myself going to write which I am a broadcaster primarily but I used to work for a newspaper I've written a book I don't count myself, if you like, as first and foremost a writer. So it's but so it surprised me, even though I like writing, that I just found myself unable to sleep night after night at a computer trying to distill what had just happened. And sometimes, especially I would say as a journalist, it's all about the opening line. And if you get the opening line for something, I didn't then know if I was going to publish it or where I might publish it or if anyone would see it beyond, I don't know, my husband or a couple of friends, family. And I just wrote, history's written by the victors, and that's true on, on the fertility battlefield. And I, I felt really weird when I was quite briefly pregnant. I mean, we got to nine weeks, but the baby died at seven. That potentially, despite it being, you know, nearly two years of hell to go through all these rounds of IVF to try to have a second child, try to have a sibling for our son, that I was going to emerge again publicly, one, once again saying, oh, I'm pregnant, and... and I had IVF again because when we had IVF the first time that was after two and a half years or so of trying with no luck and the first round worked and my goodness I have learned how lucky that was and what a miracle our son is in every sense of the word because of this experience it's reinforced it and so the only silver lining of I, I also very naively and I kind of very sweetly love myself for this thought I couldn't miscarry an IVF baby because I'd tried so hard. We'd had tried so hard. It, 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 they, couldn't, they couldn't go. How could they go? Obviously, that's not medically sound or, or in line with research or the data. But I wasn't in the mood to apply research or data. I just was a woman really happily and gratefully pregnant after a lot of trying and a lot of medicine. And so then when that happened, I just thought the only good thing that might come from this is talking about something while it's going wrong, which is an anathema to the social media age we live in. Mm -hmm. I know people talk, and you've done enormously good things about mental health more. I know that social media and the media is used to talk about when things are going wrong. But sometimes it's used, obviously, later, not contemporaneously. And I also know that women, even if they aren't having fertility issues per se, they may not just, I'm not downplaying it, they may be having miscarriages, repeat miscarriages so they can get pregnant, but whatever it is to try and have a baby, we do not very specifically and very understandably talk about it while it's happening mm. because we have mortgages, we have ambitions, we want to escape, we're superstitious. There are so many reasons I'm sure that others could give, but those are some of the headline ones. And I just thought... Why does it feel like I have to be brave to talk about loss and infertility while it's happening? Why is that such a taboo? And if while you present the world's longest women's programme, you can't take one for the team, then when can you? So that's when I sort of thought, oh, my gosh, somebody might read this beyond me. And I did find it cathartic, but I stopped caring about how it would be received. I just hoped if I did publish it, it could help somebody. 